join kids hat family Tofu please finish your breakfast first No I want to play first I don't like it anyway Tofu it is not nice to leave your food like that You should be thankful to your food and eat it respectfully The first Thanksgiving This is a very old story. It is from the year 1620 when a group of pilgrims came from Europe in a ship called the Mayflower to the east coast of United States. We have reached this new land and we shall make it our home now. Let us call it Plymouth. Yes. And this big rock by which Plymouth is recognized will be called the Plymouth Rock. We shall make a settlement here. And so the pilgrims got busy trying to make a settlement in their new home. But they had arrived in the peak of winter with little resources and no food. Oh, this is such a difficult winter. We have almost no food. The men go and catch whatever fish they can find in the freezing lakes, but it is not always enough. Yes, and a sickness has taken over our people. We have lost so many strong men and women already. It is very difficult without proper food and supplies to take care of them. Yes. Look at what happened to our brother James Chilton and his wife. They both died leaving behind little Mary Chilton. Poor Mary, she's only 13 years old. But without her mother and father to take care of her, we will have to make sure she is safe. And so Mary was taken under the care of all other pilgrims. But it was a hard sickness, and people died from extreme cold, lack of food, and the sickness that had come over the settlement. This meant Mary had to work hard. Many of the older women amongst the pilgrims had died. And the remaining work had to be shared by everyone. Mary took care of cooking and laundry for the men and boys whose wives or mothers had died. Then one day in March two strangers called Samoset and Squanto visited the settlement. They were native Indians who lived on the land. Hello settlers, welcome to your new home. Thank you. Who are you? I am Samoset. I am the leader of the Abenaki people. And this is Squanto from the Wampanoag tribe. Hello Samoset and Squanto. How is it that you speak such good English? I have had experience with other settlers who know English. We see that we are having trouble with food. Squanto here can teach you how to grow food on this soil. 
and so the pilgrims made new friends and learned how to grow food in their new home. They learned that using fish as fertilizers will help their crops grow better. With the help of Squanto and the other people of his tribe, the pilgrims grew a healthy crop of beans, pumpkins and corns. To celebrate the harvest, the pilgrims invited King Massasoit of the Wampanoag tribe to the feast. King Massasoit's men helped the settlers hunt for the feast and large feast of corn, roasted meat, pie, fruits was laid. The pilgrims dedicated this day to getting together with friends and family and thanking God for the abundance of good food and loving people in our lives. I get it now, Tia. We should be thankful for the abundance of food we have. I shall respectfully eat whatever is served to me. That is so wonderful, Tofu. I am proud of you. Homework, Tia? Tofu, it's dinner time and you haven't completed your homework yet? I hope you know that your teacher will be really angry. I will do it after this cartoon, Tia. But please help me so that I can finish it fast. You have been watching TV all day. You should get up and do your homework first. My hand has been hurting since morning. I'm giving it some rest. Also, dear sister, will you please get my bag and pencil box from the room? Excuses and more excuses. He should know his priorities right. Hmm. Did I forget it in school? What will I tell my teacher in school? You should be more responsible, Tofu. You are a big boy now. Anyway, complete the rest of your homework at least now and be more careful next time onwards. Tofu, let me tell you a story. In a land far away, 
lived a hard working and kind trader. Mostly he traded in salt. He also had a horse that was very lazy and always avoided work. The trader used him to carry sacks of salt from one town to the other. Here, let me load these sacks up and let's go to the town across the river to sell this salt. I am so tired today. Why do I have to work every day? I wish I could sleep throughout the day. But no, I have to carry these loads of salt and move. Come on horse! Start walking, cross that bridge. Until then, I'll pack some food for myself. The horse was crossing the river. Suddenly, he slipped and fell into the water. As he was carrying sacks of salt on his back, the salt got wet and dissolved in the water. So when the horse got up, the sacks on his back were lighter. The horse thought to himself, Wow, this seems to be a good idea. Every time I dip in the river, the salt would dissolve and my burden could be less. I must try doing this more often. I hope Master is not watching. When the master reached the town to sell the salt, it weighed just half of what he loaded. Thinking it might be his miscalculation, he sold whatever salt was left and returned home with his horse. The next morning, he again loaded his horse with the sacks of salt and started to pack his food. The horse yet again started walking before him and made it to the bridge. I must try the dipping trick again before master reaches here. The trader got really confused. As the sacks started weighing lesser every time. The horse purposely started slipping into the water every day. 
so that the sacks became lighter. One day, the trader followed the horse. and hid in the bushes. To his surprise, he noticed the horse's new trick. Oh, that's so cunning. I must teach this lazy horse a lesson soon. So the following day, instead of salt, the trader filled the sacks with cotton and tied him to the horse's back. Out of his new habit, the horse purposely fell into the river. Oh no, no! What is happening today? What is going wrong? How are these sacks getting heavier? Oh, my back hurts! What? This time, as the sacks were filled with cotton, it soaked water and became heavier. The horse dipped again and again in water, thinking to drain the salt off somehow, but all went in vain. He somehow managed to get up and cross the bridge. He sat on the ground and panted as the sacks had gotten really, really heavy. The trader laughed at him and said, Horse, I am your master. This is your work. I work very hard and worship my work. I don't make excuses or find tricks to fool others and avoid work. I must teach you to never repeat this and avoid your work. The horse learned his lesson and never tried to avoid his work again. What a wise trader! Right Tofu? He taught the lazy horse a good lesson. Come, let me give you the big bitter medicine for your hand. But hey, I can see it's totally fine now. Maybe you have forgotten about the pain. Tia, I never had any pain. I just wanted to sit and watch cartoons. I was the lazy horse today. I am sorry, Tia. I am really worried about my teacher scolding me tomorrow. Here, take your books, Tofu. I also was the trader today. I just wanted you to learn a lesson. Now you should promise me that you will always do your work and yes, I will help you with your homework. Oh, thank you, Tia. Please, let's finish my homework quickly. I don't want to be lazy at all. I will always finish all my work before doing anything else. I promise you that. Tia? 
How important is it to be clever? It is important to be clever, but one should use it only for good reason, not to hurt someone. Come, I'll tell you a story of a clever monkey and a crocodile who thought he was clever but was actually a big fool. The clever monkey. Once upon a time, on a riverside, lived a monkey on a tree. The place was a paradise for him because just hopping on a stone, he used to reach a small island in the middle of the river, which was adorned by choicest and juiciest of fruits. In the vicinity of the island, there lived a crocodile couple and every day they used to drool at the monkey hopping in and out of the island. But the monkey was so clever that the crocodile couple never managed to lay their hands on the monkey. One day the female crocodile said, Dear husband, I have a plan to nab this monkey. Ah, none of our tricks have worked with this clever monkey. What brilliant idea do you have now? The female crocodile whispered in his ears and all he could do was laugh sheepishly. The next day, when the monkey was busy feasting on fruits on the island, the crocodile very silently went and sat on the stone. When the monkey was done with eating, he was about to hop onto the stone, when suddenly he realized that the stone is looking bigger than usual. He understood that it was a crocodile waiting for him. He called out to the crocodile. Is that you, Mr. Crocodile? No, no, it's not me. And the monkey thought, how dumb could the crocodile get? So he thought for a second and called out to the crocodile. Oh, you surely caught me this time. I'll make your job easier now. Just open your mouth and I'll jump into it on my own. The foolish crocodile opened his wide mouth with his eyes shut and waited for the monkey to jump. The clever monkey who was watching the closed eye crocodile hopped on the head of the crocodile and crossed the river. <laughs> you couldn't fool me this time either. By clear and clever thinking, the monkey managed to trick the foolish crocodile. <laughs> the crocodile was indeed a fool who got tricked by the clever monkey. Ya yeah, Tofu! And the moral is that we must think before we do anything. Like that clever monkey and not like that foolish crocodile. Did you have a good birthday, Tofu? Yes, very much. And look at all the lovely gifts you've got. Uh, yes. Why? What's wrong? Mm, nothing is wrong, but I just thought Grandmom could have got me a better gift than the single rose flower. Tofu, that's not a nice thing to say. You didn't notice her love for you that made her fly all the way across the country to be with you today. Love? But that's not a gift. Maybe you'll think differently once you hear the story of the Snow Queen. The 
द स्नो क्वीन Once upon a time in a small village lived two neighbors who were best friends too. Their names were Gerda and Kay. They loved each other a lot. As a symbol of their friendship and love, one day they both planted a rose plant each in their front yards. Every morning they would get together and water their plants and take care of them when winters came gerda invited kay why don't you come over in the afternoon my grandma has promised to make us a cup of hot chocolate and tell us a story okay gerda i will come over after finishing my chores As promised, Kay went to Gerda's home in the afternoon. Tell us the story of the Snow Queen, Grandmama. Bah! There is no Snow Queen. Do you still believe in such stories? Little did Kay know that the Snow Queen did exist. And she had a magic mirror. with which she could look at anybody and right at that moment she was looking into gerda's living room where they sat doesn't believe in me does he i will send him my ice arrows that will turn him cold All the love will be gone from his eyes and his heart will freeze over. And the Snow Queen sent her ice arrows towards Kay. As soon as they entered Gerda's home, they went straight for Kay's eyes and heart. Ouch! My eyes! What's happening? They hurt. What is wrong, Kay? Ouch! My heart. It hurts too. Kay, what's wrong? Are you okay? Suddenly, Kay's whole behavior changed towards Gerda. Oh, stop being such a wimp, Gerda. Nothing is wrong. Get away from me. Saying so, he shoved Gerda aside and went home. Over the next few days he would give cold mean looks to Gerda and would never talk to her nicely. He wouldn't even come to tend to the roses that they had planted. One morning when Gerda was watering the plants she saw Kay get into a carriage with a lady who was wearing a white gown she had skin like diamonds and her hair was silver white gerda immediately knew that it was the snow queen she decided to follow her but the carriage just vanished into thin air so she went to her grandmama Yeah. Take this hand mirror and follow what it tells you. The mirror only tells you the truth. Gerda took the mirror from her grandma and looked into it. The mirror told her to find the flower garden. So Gerda went looking for it. Meanwhile, once the Snow Queen reached the palace, she told Kay to make it his home from now on. This is your home now. You will never leave here. And once your heart freezes over, you will be mine forever. Back in the village, 
Gerda found the flower garden and entered it. The garden was full of the most beautiful flowers Gerda had ever seen. She fell in love with them immediately. But there was no smell of the flowers. Surprised, Gerda bent down and touched one of the flowers to understand if they were real. As soon as she touched one flower, the fragrances of all flowers returned and the flower lady appeared in front of her. Thank you! You have returned the fragrance of my flowers. Who are you? I am the owner of this garden. I am the flower lady. Can you help me? Have you seen my friend Kay pass through here? He has been taken by the Snow Queen. Oh no! The Snow Queen! She is one who had taken away the fragrance of my flowers. I did not see Kay cross from here. But you should try the river outside the village. Gerda thanked the flower lady and went to the river. There she saw a boat waiting for her. She climbed into the boat and it took her to the pirate ship. Aboard the ship, Gerda saw many pirates including a girl pirate. Hello, can you help me? I am looking for my friend Kay. The Snow Queen has taken him. I don't know any Kay. And even if I did, I wouldn't tell you. Because once aboard the pirate ship, you can't go anywhere. You have to be here. No, please, you have to let me go. Kay is my friend. I have to save him. Friend, you say? <laughs> well, I have never had a friend. Okay, I will help you if you promise to be my friend. Yes, of course. I would love to be your friend. Okay then. Take my reindeer. He is the fastest reindeer in the world. And she knows where the Snow Queen's palace is. Gerda thanked the pirate girl and climbed on the back of the reindeer. Just as the pirate girl had promised, the reindeer had Gerda outside the Snow Queen's palace in no time. Gerda got off the reindeer and went inside the palace. Kay? Kay? Are you in here? What are you doing here? I am here to take my friend back with me. <laughs> Your friend doesn't exist anymore. Look at him, standing there in the corner. Just in a few minutes, his heart will freeze over and then he will be mine forever. Gerda turned to see where the Snow Queen had pointed. In the corner stood Kay. His lips were blue and eyes were steely cold. Gerda rushed to him. Kay, it's me, your friend. When Kay didn't reply, she reached out for his hand. His old friend's touch returned the colour in Kay's eyes. Encouraged by this change, Gerda pushed on. Remember all the times we had fun at home? And our roses that we have in the front yard? There is no point in all this. His heart will freeze soon. 
Hearing this, Gerda broke down and started crying. As she was crying, her tears rolled down from her eyes and onto the hands of Kay. As soon as that happened, Kay looked up at Gerda and smiled. Gerda, my friend, you came for me. This is impossible. Nothing can ever turn my curse over. She tried to pull Gerda away from Kay. And that's when Grandma's mirror fell out of Gerda's pocket. When the Queen looked into it, it spoke to her. Snow Queen, you have been mistaken. There is one power stronger than your curse and it is the power of love. Hearing this truth, the Snow Queen started crying and soon dissolved in a pool of her own tears. <laughs> feel so terrible, dear. I think I have not been fair to Grandmom. Well, you still have time to make things better, Tofu. Yeah, you are right, dear. I will go to her and apologize right away. Don't forget to give her a kiss and a big hug. Today I am very happy. I met one of my friends who was acting all greedy and selfish in class. So I told him the story of the Pied Piper of Hamelin and he soon understood the lesson. Really Tofu? I haven't heard this one. I would love to hear it from you. The Pied Piper of Hamelin Once upon a time, there was a town named Hamelin. The town was beautiful, bustling with energy and wealth. But no sooner the happiness of the town was ruined by a plague. Plague of Rats There were rats everywhere. So much so that the people of the town didn't even have a place to keep a step without tripping over the rats. There were rats of every size, shape, every age and colour. Nothing worked as a remedy. Not even the cats were able to control the plague of rats. Giving up, the authorities decided to announce a reward of 10 bags of gold to anyone who could help to get rid of the rats. One day, a strange looking man came to the town. He was dressed in the traditional dress, but all red in color, with a long peculiar nose and big wide eyes. He adorned his head with a feather in his hat. He went to the authorities and said, Ah, uh, I have a solution for your problem. I assure you that not a single rat would live in this beautiful town. But I want ten gold bags that you have promised as prize. The authorities were not very sure of his commitment, but still allowed him to give it a try as they had no other option. 
Soon, the strange looking man took out a Pied Piper from his pocket and started playing a very strange tune. Within no time, all the rats started coming out and following him. From every nook and corner of the town, so many rats came out that the whole street was filled with them. Very strangely, the rats started following the Pied Piper who was playing the strangest tune ever heard. The Pied Piper took them to the town's river and entered into it. In no time, all the rats, mesmerized by his tune, fell into the river and drowned. There were rejoices in the town, celebrations all over. Soon, the Pied Piper went to the authorities to claim his prize money. But since their work was done and they thought that this plague would never return, they shun him off and asked him to leave without giving him a single penny. What selfish people are these? I did them a favour, freed them from such a bad epidemic and all they could care was to be greedy and ungrateful? Now look how I will teach these selfish people a lesson. The Pied Piper took out his pipe once again and started playing another strange tune. A tune that no one had ever heard before. In no time, all the children of the town, mesmerized by the music, started following the Pied Piper. The children were so lost in his tune that they didn't realize that they have come out to the outskirts of the town. The Pied Piper took them to a cave and let them in. He kept playing the tune till all the children were inside the cave. He then closed the cave with a huge stone. Only two kids were left in the entire town. A boy who was hard of hearing and a girl who had hurt her legs so badly that she couldn't keep up the pace with the rest of the kids. These two kids went back and told their parents about the Pied Piper and how he lured all the children into the cave. Soon the authorities went begging to the Pied Piper and requested him to let their children out. This time they promised to reward him with 20 gold bags. I don't trust you any longer. I want my prize money beforehand. Soon he was handed over his prize money and he left never to be seen again. 
the children were freed from the cave and the parents hugged them and cried. Watching this, the authorities said, We surely have learned a lesson. This man came out of nowhere and saved us from an epidemic. All that we did in return was to be selfish and ungrateful. He surely taught us a lesson of not to be greedy and selfish. That night, the town rejoiced and celebrated like a festival. It still said that in the town of Hamelin, if you ever go and listen carefully, you might hear the beautiful sound of the Pied Piper. Tofu, I'm so proud of you. You must be a little naughty, but you surely are a good boy. <laughs> For your favorite rhymes, stories, and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.